Okay, great. Well, Noel, so where did it all begin? Where did you, how did you get into it in the first place? Human biology, if I, if I, if I give you a quote, um, the first textbook on the human biology was, was published, as I said, in 1964, and this is it. And it was by four authors. And in the foreword, he defines human biology for the first time. And he says this, he says, Human biology is not so much a discipline as a certain attitude of mind towards the most interesting and important of animals. Human biology portrays mankind on the canvas that serves also for other living things. It's about men rather than man, about their origin, evolution, geographical deployment, and so on and so forth. When you look at the human, you don't look at them in terms of their physiology. You don't look at them in terms of their biochemistry. You don't look at them in terms of their anatomy. You do all of those things, but you also see them in the environment in which they live. Strangely enough, 50 years ago this year, I uh, walked onto this campus uh, as a student. One of the subjects that they taught within sports science at that time was called human biology. That was the place that I found I really wanted to work in. Part of the stuff I was working on was human growth and development which for me was really the most interesting thing that I'd got involved in up to that time. So I found myself working more and more on uh, advising people from developing countries. When I was in uh, Johannesburg, I was in the medical school in Johannesburg and, um, uh, and, be and became professor of anatomy and human biology in the medical school. And that department developed the largest repository of hominin fossil remains in the world. So I you know, had an abiding interest, obviously, in human evolution, but an abiding interest in, in these fossils. But it wasn't the major thing in my life. The major thing in my life was, taking my, was doing my studies of human growth. However, one of the individuals who arrived in 1989 was a student called Lee Berger. And Lee Berger was destined to become um, probably one of the greatest explorers and finders of hominin fossil remains that we've ever seen. They've found pre-adults, so almost complete skeletons of pre-adults. Now, paleoanthropologists who work in this area aren't used to dealing with the process of growth because they don't see growth. So they asked me if I get involved. One of the secrets of understanding human evolution is to understand how the process of growth changed over time. The work that I do in birth cohort studies is to try to understand what it is that drives our development now, what it is that drives the species now. Yeah, well, I think the important thing from my point of view is that, is that this work on, on hominid fossils um, has brought together the work that I've done over the last 40 or so years, but it's brought, together in, brought them together in such a way that the current work that we do in at Loughborough in human biology, the current work that we teach our human biology students, um, is displayed in the way in which we analyse the process of evolution as demonstrated by these fossils, the process of human growth and development, which we're trying to apply to these fossils to see whether they grow in a more ape-like fashion or a more human-like fashion, um, our place in human evolution, um, the way indeed, once we know that, in the way in which we behaved, uh, the extent of our childhood, and therefore the extent of our social interactions with the, the family, the broader family, the tribal group in which we would have been born. Um, and therefore it brings together human biology in a way that very few things do.